Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry Show. I'm being joined by my esteemed colleague from across the ocean, far away in Great Britain, the famous <laughs> and irreplaceable Katie Hopkins. Good <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Hello to you, Barry. And I speak to you from a very, very distraught UK where Boris Johnson has just locked us all down once again. Well, before I ask you about what happened over there, I want to remind our viewers to please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our free text message alert system by texting the word truth in a blank text message and send it to 88202. Push send. You'll be automatically subscribed. You'll get all of our shows like this and everything else on your cell phone absolutely free. So, Katie. What did your old friend Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, do? He just made a speech to the nation and he told us he's locking us down again and there is going to be no shops, no work, no leaving your home, no international travel, no nothing, and no end date either. Uh, are the kids going to go to school? No schools either. And I sat watching it with my children who are both of exam age. He also said no exams, but didn't say what there would be. So complete confusion here. Uh, children don't know what they're doing. We're not going back to school. Nobody's going back to work. And certainly a real air of dismay. If I can just uh, give an example of what it's like here, it's about two degrees, it's freezing, it's dark at 4 p.m. and doesn't get light till 8 a.m. This is gonna be a long haul for a lot of Brits. Oh. Boy, so people are staying home because they have to. What happens if you are out, like you went marketing or whatever? Yeah, so they're going to bring this into law, Barry, on Wednesday, so a day or so's time. And at that point, it becomes illegal to be doing any of those activities, and it's a prosecutable offense. Um, the other thing I think important to note is that during the first lockdown, people were fearful of this virus. They did what they were told. Now, of course, there's a lot of skepticism. A lot of people are saying, well, there's nothing really to worry about. And now being locked down again when people are skeptical is a completely different matter. So before I, we talk about the vaccine and all of that, I'm, the obvious question is, what if you have to go get something for your family, like, you know, food? Yeah. You're allowed to make a specific trip for food or emergency medical care, but you're not allowed out in any more than yourself. You're only allowed out for that food mission, and then you have to return to your homes. Uh, and I think it's the manner in which this is being brought in where we're not seeing anything getting worse. We're just seeing ourselves battered again. And people, you know, this now feels like cruelty. I mean, honestly, people are despairing. I, I believe there will be children tonight that don't make it through till tomorrow because their exams have just been taken, their schools have just been taken. They're not gonna see a way through this. And our suicide rate here has gone off the charts, much higher deaths to suicide than COVID. Yeah, I'm sure of it. So let's talk about this vaunted vaccine. Uh, side effects from the various vaccines are pouring in from around the world. I was looking at news out of Israel uh, this morning. Um, there are people having incredible side effects. Israel is one of the countries that's rolling out the vaccine like maniacs. They've been, uh, injected more than 1 million people so far. Uh, there are stories of anaphylactic shock, uh, allergic reactions to uh, the disease um, cure. Uh, people, over 200 Israelis have gotten the disease after getting the injection. Um, the vaccine manufacturers are scrambling how to figure that out. There were uh, people all over the United States falling over after getting the shot. Um, what do people say over there? I mean, is there a lot of that? So there's, there's this, because we have socialized healthcare, the NHS, uh, they are under kind of, they have a gun to their heads. If they speak out, they lose their jobs. My email inbox, I was just looking, is full full of emails from doctors and nurses wanting a way of speaking out, but they can't do it personally. So just one example here. I'm a nurse. My husband and I also work, my husband also works in the NHS. We'll try our hardest not to have the vaccine. 
but they get you by saying you can't do this job or that job if you don't have it. It's so tricky. Hope it doesn't get forced on us. Lots of doctors and nurses now feeling ram, you know, railroaded down into having this vaccine and they don't want to have it. They're saying over 50% of staff they work with don't want to have this vaccine. And that's inside our medical profession. Well, the CDC here in the States is saying if you have allergies to food or medicine, which has got to be like, I don't know, 20% of the population, you shouldn't get the vaccine. Um, I haven't read that in the news, but I did read it on the CDC website. So they seem to be losing confidence in the ability of the vaccine to be administered safely without side effects. Absolutely. And it, one of the bo things Boris just did that was so disheartening was he, when he shut us down and it was almost like turning the screws on sort of a tortured people. He said, ah, but there is a way out. There is an escape from this and it's the vaccine. And if we get this rolled out enough to enough people, that could be your way out. It was almost like, here I am locking you down with the key. If you want the key, you take the vaccine like good children and then we'll let you out the cage. And that's quite dark when you actually watch that happening. Boy, is that creepy. So you're on an island. Um, what are you gonna say? What are you gonna do, Katie, if it becomes mandatory, like the rumor is in about, oh, I don't know, 100 countries, they're going to issue vaccine passports of some kind that you have to show in order to get on any transportation system, trains, planes, subways, buses. Do you, do you just stay home forever? What happens? What are you gonna do? Right, it's unbelievable. I, I can't imagine ever just staying on this island. I'm not going to. In many ways, it's a bit like government. If you don't elect a government, do you have to listen to it? If you're governed by the will of the people and it's not your will, should you listen? I feel the same way about this hoax virus. I don't believe it's any different to the flu. If it's a hoax or a fabricated virus, why shouldn't I fabricate my vaccine passport? I'm sure there's going to be quite a handy little black market in forged items. And I'm not frightened of using a hoax vaccine a passport for a hoax virus, quite frankly. Uh, and they can come and arrest me now for that one. Well, at least you won't drop into anaphylactic shock or Bell's palsy yeah. or a heart uh, attack. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Holy moly. It's going to be a wild 2021. Thanks, Katie. And thank you for joining us on ATP Report on the Katie and Barry Show. Remember, you can always sign up at our website, A tpamericantruthproject.org and get all of our stuff uh, in your email or do it through our text alert system by simply sending the word truth to 88202. You'll get all of our shows absolutely for free on your cell phone. For Katie and Barry, thanks for joining us today on ATP Report.